What's going on, everybody? It's What a Weeb, and yeah, back again. Been a while, but we're back with a should you pull video for everyone's lovely lolly, Iliasville von Einsburn, also known as Ilya. But I wanted to be sound fancy, but I want to make it kind of clear that this Ilya isn't the one we all may know. This is the one from the Prisma Ilya universe. Great series if you get over the intense fan service, which honestly isn't that bad, let's be honest. But, uh, uh, but great series, probably one of my favorite Fate series, honestly. Um, and I would love to pull for her, so, but I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Maybe I can help you guys decide and myself at the same time. All right, moving, uh, moving to, uh, moving on to her history, aka not moving on to her history because everything would be a spoiler. Um, well, a lot of it would be spoiler and, I don't want to do that to you guys. So if you have different views than me, though, for this whole video, make sure to leave in the comment section below. I love to learn. Let's get into it. Her card setup. Triple Arts, one quick, one buster card. Very normal for a caster. She has a buster NP, so she will not be, you know, she won't be able to do a buster Brave Chain, which is, honestly, it's fine. Doesn't matter that much. Um, you know, it's kind of like her brother Emiya, so it's kind of nice that that's, uh, that's a thing. And uh, with her three arts cards, she's just able to fire her, you know, NP off more reliably. But uh, because of her NP generation rate, anything outside of the arts cards has pretty bad NP generation, unfortunately. But uh, hey, as long as you got arts cards going on, it's time. It's time. Uh, her and Zwanzang are pretty much the five star offensive casters, both with the Buster MP, triple arts card, etc. Um, so not a lot of competition. There's really no other competition. In the five star category, um, they both do a similar job, and they both undergo some changes in the future. Anyway, standard card layout for a caster. Moving on to her active skills. Skill one. This skill, though, I love skills like this. If you watch the previous ones, I love skills that are just super simple, straightforward, and just get the job done. Speaks for itself. Buster up by fifty percent at max level. Pretty much meant to be used with her NP. Great buff. Nothing complicated. Use it when you're about. Use it when you're about to use her NP. And you'll see the damage just soar. Um, and so, skill two. Child of Nature. A little bit more complicated, but it's just an invincible with an NP gain bonus, you know, NP bonus gain over three turns. Helps you build up your NP a little bit and gives you a get out of jail free card. Works nicely together uh, with Ilya because you will probably use this on an enemy who's going to NP you. And if it hits multiple times, you get you get some decent charge out of it. You get some pretty decent charge out of it. All right, skill three, arguably my least favorite, only because uh, of the percentages, but Suspicious Medicine A, 70% chance for Guts and Nullify Debuff, and 100% chance to restore HP. All right, this skill would be great if it was 100%. In the future, I believe they changed Kuro um, so that uh, it becomes 100% chance, and uh, if you use one of Kuro's skills, but then you're forced to use her on the same team, which is not bad, but it's not like the best. Anyway, um, but I mean, I wouldn't mind running Kuro, don't get me wrong. She's a really good archer and a uh, good character, but uh, leaves a bad taste in my mouth being forced to use another character just to reliably use her skill. All right, passive skill time. Only has two, nice and easy. Our favorite passive in the world, magic resistance. All right, moving on. Unlimited mana supply. That's her good, <laughs> that's her good one. Pretty decent skill. 3% NP per turn. Another skill that helps her charge her NP so she can spam it. Um, just like Zwanzang, these offensive casters just want to fire off their NP. And it's it's really, it's just good. It's just a good secondary skill. Unfortunately, she doesn't have territory creation like 90% of other arts casters. So you don't get as much out of her arts cards as you might another caster. But I don't think you can do about it. Um, but since she does have a limited mana supply, you masters out there don't have to mana transfer with her. Or, you know, FBI warning. Boop! All right. Um... Uh, all right, her NP, which is a full shout-out to the anime. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Quintet Fear, Multi-Instrumental Saturation Bombardment. Buster Single NP, you know, Buster Single Target NP. Good NP, honestly. Supposed to be for that massive damage nuke, but you do get a caveat of losing 10% attack and defense over three turns after you use it, which I believe is negated by a 70% buff uh, chance of nullifying debuffs, but then you get get into percent chances, and yeah. Either way, pretty dope, uh, you know, straight dope NP. Uh, also, it gets upgraded to 800% damage in the future. 
Uh, it has a overcharge effect of, you know, Buster Up. I mean, I don't know how many times you're going to overcharge that one, but uh, it's nice. It's nice. Uh, definitely nice. But otherwise, nothing complicated about it. It just does a bunch of damage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's cool, though. It is cool. All right. Quickly on to your stats. This is going to be super brief because there's not really much point in spending too much time on this. Uh, only problem... She has low NP gain, so like I said before, if you don't use arts cards, you probably won't gain much uh, NP gauge. But otherwise, it's relatively standard across the board, and I won't spend any more time on it. Now, CEs. All right, CEs. This is what you guys care about. How? What What should you run with her? In my opinion, um, I would stay away from Formal Craft. Just because her NP is Buster-based, so you could use, you know, maybe Magical Girl of Sapphire, which comes out with the event. Uh, it helps fix some of her problems because it doesn't give her that NP start, um, NP gain, you know, it gives a lot of uh, bonuses. But honestly, a lot of the C's for her aren't out yet, so I'm not going to go into it. Um, but, you know, the ones that are out, the best ones for her that are out are probably Halloween Princess, Black Grail, um, which, you know, honestly, as far as the name goes, Halloween Princess is the best option if you do have it. If you don't have it, that's unfortunate, but you still have Black Grail. Both of the Grail items, you know, but I don't like... You know, I'm just going to say Black Grail because damage. Um, but, uh, yeah, those are probably the best ones, in my opinion. If you guys think of any other ones, let me know in the comment section below. And uh, as for her teammates, well, of course, Merlin. You know, Merlin gives you that 5% uh, extra MP over turn, so that becomes 8% with Ilya. Um, so you can use Hero Creation to bo boost her damage even more. And Merlin just works with, like, almost everybody. Um, Zwanzang also works with her. Both share the same card setup and uh, gives uh, good fixes to Ilya. Helps her out a lot, actually, with the her own apply uh, nullify debuff, just in case Ilya doesn't proc. Um, of course, Waver, bringing her up for NP after using it, helps maintain it. She gives him, makes it a little tanky. I mean, the crit doesn't really matter, but everything else he does is pretty useful. Um, Ozzy gives him or her a chance to, you know, makes it 100% chance of 70% chance, and the charisma helps out a little bit. And Ozzy's just fun and awesome to use anyway. So, <laughs> use Ozzy. But uh, Kuro works great, like I said, after her buff. Um, you could also run Helena because she has that multi-card buff. Um, and if you're going for a caster, you know, caster team, Helena would be pretty good. There are a couple other ones, but I think these are the ones that came to my mind. Um, and I think they work probably the best quote-unquote, <laughs> quote-unquote. Let me know, of course, in the comment section below if you think differently. All right, you know, I know I went through that a little quickly this time around, but should you pull? So should you pull? Um, if she's your waifu, watch out for the FBI. But otherwise, she's not the best servant in the world, but if she is your waifu, you pull for her. That's all it is. Um, if you have Zhuangzang and don't care for Ilya, I would say it's a pass. Easy pass. If you don't have Zhuangzang or Ilya, I'd say try a little bit, but don't go all in unless you really want her. Um, I love her, but just not super duper worth it. Uh, especially with the banner hell we'll be facing in the next coming months, in the upcoming months, it's going to be really bad. You're going to get Musashi, Ishtar, King Hassan, uh, Merlin. That's all coming up, guys. And so if we're not ready, uh, it's over. But, uh, well, that's really it for my overview. I hope you enjoyed. You know, I'm trying to get more to the point, to the, to the, to the key. So you don't waste you got your guys' time as much. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you did remember, you know, if you did enjoy, uh, remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, become a weeb today. Check us out on social media. That's all linked in the description below. And let me know what you think of Ilya. Is she better than I actually thought? Help me change my mind because I really would love to have my mind changed on this. In my opinion, Zwanzang just is better for, uh, difficult content. I just don't like one of Zwanzang's skills. If you haven't seen that video, just check it out. Check it out. Uh, but, uh... Yeah, no, otherwise, nice and quick. So this has been Durka and Sayo. Nada.